might remember my next guest as the creator of the hit play and TV series, The Kink in My Hair, and now playwright, director, and producer, Trey Anthony, has brought us another critically acclaimed play. It's coming back to the stage. It's called How Black Mothers Say I Love You, and she's joining us in the studio today. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, tell us about how your own story inspired this content. Definitely. My grandmother, she left um, Jamaica to go to England, leaving my mother behind in Jamaica for over six years. And then my own mother left me behind in England and came to Canada for four years. So I come from this legacy of black women who leave their children behind in search for a better dream. And it was really something that I needed to just really work out for myself because I could see how this separation had really affected my own family dynamic. And this is not a, uh, a storyline that just affects a few people. There are thousands of yes. women over decades who have made this tough choice of leaving a family behind in one country, setting up life in a new one. Uh, and you know, it can be years before you reunite a family. Yes, definitely. For even my own family, this separation, we could see the repercussions of this for many years. And I've spoken to uh, various women who were immigrant women who had come over and left their children behind. It's happening in the West Indian community, the Filipino community a lot of communities and what happens is that a lot of people talk about what a great opportunity is for these women to leave but a lot of people don't talk about the damage that is done to these really delicate mother and daughter relationships mother and daughter you know also affecting sons as well because yes. a lot of these times women are leaving when their children are young you know we call those the formative years yeah. for a reason so you're leaving a toddler behind uh, you know you're reuniting together at you know six seven eight years old mm -hmm. what kind of effects did you see in your own life for me, my mother left me from ages 9 to 12. And I think, especially as a young girl, I was going through puberty. There was a lot of things that I didn't know about my body. I was I'm figuring out stuff for myself. And I could see with my own relationship with my mother versus my sister, who was with my mother throughout her entire childhood, that with her and I, that there was always this distance, a little bit of tension. Were you jealous ever of your sister? Oh, definitely. I, defin I was jealous of the ease that her and my mother seemed to have, this connection that no matter how I tried, I didn't feel like I could get that connection back. And I, I think it was because I missed out on those years. And then I also then became very much closer to my grandmother, mm -hmm. who became this mother figure to me. And then there was this dynamic between my mother and my grandmother and both all of us trying to figure out who was the mother, who was the daughter, who was trying to mother each other, right? A friend of mine in the West Indian community lived this out. And when he came to Canada, you know, he. He had lived a comfortable life uh, down in the uh, down in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Comes to Canada, uh, you know they're struggling to to start out when his mom came yes. here, and you know there was this feeling of where did you bring me and who are you, lady? Oh yes, like even when I came, Emery, like my mother was working three jobs to survive to look after her family. I had come from a family where my grandmother was there with extended family. People were always home, so I basically came to Canada. Now I became this latchkey kid, just coming home to an empty home being there with my brother, looking after my brother because my mother was working. And so it was a real big change for me. I, I just felt like I was by myself a lot. Does, does your mom feel like your mom now? Um, definitely. I mean, she does feel like my mom. And I think also writing this play and speaking to my mother and speaking to my grandmother, there was a level of healing and forgiveness. And I think a lot of times, especially as a daughter, you have this image of who your mother is supposed to be. And I had to let go of that image and just say, you know, at the end of the day, she's an adult. She's a human being who made mistakes and she made choices that maybe I may not have made mm -hmm. or maybe I did not agree with, but now I understand why she made those choices. There's an important story there to be told and an important legacy too. Hey, you and I met back when uh, The Kink in My Hair went from the stage to the, to the TV screen. Yes. What did that success mean for you? For me, it really has been about diversity, putting stories on stage and knowing that they're important and showing um, a different culture on stage and going to mainstream. That was really important for me. It was important for me to see myself as a writer and as a producer and just having women coming up to me and saying, thank you for telling our stories. Thank you for telling them in an authentic way, showing different cultures in mainstream media. That was so important. You've been called the Oprah of the theater <laughs> world. What do you think of that? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take Oprah's money as well. <laughs> I 
that goes. Both. But I, I love that. I have a really great fan base who come out time and time again, so selling out my shows. And it's like a family. And I feel they know I love them, they love me. And it's just been a really wonderful ride for all of these years. And I, I feel very thankful and grateful for that. And Oprah, if you're out there, I want to see you and meet you. <laughs> I think she'd like this one. Trey, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you on your so morning. much for having me. Hey, if you are in the Toronto area, you can catch How Black Mothers Say I Love You from now until March 5th. It's playing at the Factory Theatre, and you can head to yourmorning.ca for more details.